Hello, and welcome back to BlackWhoMinistries.com. I'm your host, Minister Love, and we want to welcome you to episode number nine on this awesome series where we're talking about couples in my Bible. Are they usual or unusual? And we're going to look at the couple today called Good and Bad. So we got some great scriptures for you today, and we're looking forward to bringing to you a wonderful lesson on this couple. And we're going to find out, are they usual or unusual? So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get this study going. I just want to say, everyone, if you want to contact us, uh, send us an email at loveblackcoo.com at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. Amen. All right, then, as we do here uh, at the uh, series that we're going to be teaching on, we want to open up in prayer. And we're going to get this Bible study going. (laughs) Dear Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost, thank you so much for another day to come into your word, to glean from your word, the scriptures that are so relevant for today's times that we're living in. So Father, open up our hearts, open up our ears and minds and spirits and soul that we can take in all of your good teachings today. Bless everyone that's watching and hearing uh, your word today that's being taught. Bless me, Father God, that I will continue to stay strong and bring forth these awesome teachings for this year. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Well, everyone, you know we are Bible lovers, achieving Christ's knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. And we do love us in prayer. Amen. And I pray that you do too. You love prayer as well because it does get God's attention. All right. So again, as we said, here this week, we're talking about this couple. As you can see, we got good and we got bad, don't we? So there is a difference, or, and we're going to look and see, should they be together? Or, or, or should they maintain a relationship? And that's going to be the key here today. We're going to be looking at these scriptures, and we're going to be looking for the key words of good and bad, and we're going to be looking at who who knows about this couple? He's, who's telling us about this couple? And is it good or is it bad? Is it usual or unusual that they should be together. Amen. So with that being said as well, we want to get into the teachings where I'd like to give you some, uh, the Hebrew and the Greek. So let's take a look at the first word, good. How do we say that in the Hebrew? It's called toe. And what does it mean? Beautiful, best, better, bountiful, cheerful, someone that's at ease, favor, fine, glad, Good deed, good pleasure, something that's precious, prosperity. So these are, this is good. This is describing good in the Hebrew. How would you describe good and say it in our uh, Greek Bible? It would be called halos. And it means properly, beautiful, uh, good, valuable, virtuous. And so there it is. We got this description of good in the Greek and the Hebrew Bible. And so far, this is all good. Great things about it, isn't it? So let's take a look at this other word, bad, the other part of this couple. So bad in the Hebrew is called raw. It means adversity, affliction, bad, calamity, displeasure, distress, evil, grief, harm, uh, uh, heavy on your spirit. You've been hurt. Uh, it's not pleasing, sorrow, trouble, your vex. So that's what bad means in the Hebrew. What does it mean in Greek? It's called paneros. It means degeneracy from, from, from virtuous, something calamitous, disease, derelict, vicious, mischief, malice, guilt. A, a, a masculine, the devil, who sinners, grievous, harm, lewd. So now that we got the descriptions of good, we just saw what bad is. So now that you know about this couple, are they usual or are they unusual? What do you think? How do you think this couple relationship should be? Well, I'm going to say it's unusual. Uh, uh, no one wants to be in a relationship with bad. 
And we're going to be seeing this in the scriptures today. So I know you got your Bibles. Get ready to go into the scriptures with us. And we're going to explore this unusual couple called good and bad. Now, just for some of you, your Bible may say uh, good and evil. Well, we know evil, we just saw there, that is synonymous with bad, isn't it? So let's take a look at our very first scripture. And we're going to go over to 2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 34 and 35. Now, this scripture was written around about 1000 BC. So let's see what the prophet has to say. Uh, uh, David is going to be speaking here in the book of Sam Samuel. So let's see what's going on here. But Barzillai said to the king, how long have I to live that I should go up to Jerusalem? I am today 80 years old. Can I discern between the good and bad? Can your servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any longer the voice of singing men and singing women? Why then should your servant be a further burden to my Lord the King? So here we got Barzillai. And Barzillai is in a conversation with King David. Now, let me just give you a backdrop of how we got where we are. Remember, David had a son named Absalom. And remember, Absalom tried to kill David. Well, while David was fleeing from Absalom, he met Barzillai on the way. And Barzillai was good to David. He took care of David. He made sure David had the necessity of the things that he needed. So he was good to David. Well, Absalom is dead now. He's dead. And David had been mourning and mourning over Absalom. And so Joab, who was David's uh uh, commander of the army, he came to David and told him, he said, David, you, uh, enough is enough. Absalom tried to kill you and you got your people out there that's waiting for you to come out of your grief and come back to them and be a king. And so when David did that, David got himself together. He gets up, he cleanses himself up and now he's ready to do his kingly duties. So as David is doing this, get lo and behold, who does he meet on the road again? Barzilla. And so David is on his way back to Jerusalem because remember, Absalom is dead. He ain't chasing him no more. So David can go back home. So this is where we get into the conversation with Barzilla. He's talking to David. And so he, he in this conversation with David, and let's take a look at verse 35. So remember the key words today is what? Good and bad. So so Barzilla is in a conversation with David. And the first question he asks him, he says, can I discern? Now, he's 80 years old now. He's an old man. He's up in age. He said, can I discern between the good and the bad? And then he goes on and talk about, can I taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear uh, the voices of singing? You know, uh, uh, I don't want to be a burden. So Barzilla is saying, I got all these things going on with me. He said, but I don't want to be a burden with you because David has asked him to come back to Jerusalem. And Barzilla is saying, you know, look, I'm 80 years old. And he's asking David all of these questions. Can I just still discern between good and bad? In other words, he wants David to know, can I still be a, a good servant to you? Yes, because David never would have asked him to come if he had not showed him kindness the first time he met Barzilla. So yes, even in your old age, even when you, ha you have been good, you have that character about you, you got ethics, you got morals about you. Even when we get old, we can still discern between good and bad. You know, there is a conversation going on now today in the world, especially with politicians that's running for office. They're saying they're too old. We need a younger uh, 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 crowd to come in into the government. You know, my thing is, just like with Barzilla here, David wanted Barzilla to come with him. So we're, David saw still the good in Barzilla. So even in our senior citizen uh, age that we may be in, we still have some what good left in us. We can still serve our community with some wisdom, with some judgment, with some counsel. There's still some good in us, old folks. Amen. So there we have. This servant of David's is letting him know, can I 
Can I still tell the difference between good and bad? Yes, you can. And that's the question today. We got so many political leaders out there that they they just bit on bad. And, 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 and they know good. They know what's good, but they don't want that because that's not their nature. That's not their M.O. They are bit on a division, destruction, annihilation. They want to get rid of anything that's good. But they want you to think that they are a sheep in sheep clothing, but they're really a wolf in sheep clothing clothing. Amen. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at another scripture. Okay. Remember, we're talking about good and bad. So take a look at Jeremiah chapter 24, and we're going to read verse two, five, and eight. Now this was written around about 626 BC. Okay. So let's take a look and let's see what Jeremiah, the prophet has to say about this unusual couple. Take a look. One basket had very good figs, like the figs that are first ripe. And the other basket had very bad figs, which could not be eaten. They were so bad. Verse five, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, like these good figs, so will I acknowledge those who are carried away captive from Judah, whom I have sent out of this place for their own good into the land of the Chaldeans, which we know is Babylon. Verse eight. And as for the bad things, which cannot be eaten, they are so bad. One Bible says evil. Surely thus says the Lord. So I will give up Zedekiah, the king of Judah, his princes, the remnant of Jerusalem who remain in this land and those who dwell in the land of Egypt. Whoa, this is a very interesting uh, uh, scriptures that we're going to see here. So again, who's the scripture talking about? It's Jeremiah, and he's in a conversation with the Lord. And if you go back further in the reading, and many of you know your Bible, remember God asked Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, what do you see? And Jeremiah said, I see two baskets. And one basket got some good figs, and the other basket got some bad figs. So then we need to know, okay, well, who are the good figs? So at this time, you need to understand at this time, Babylon is getting ready to come in and take Israel, Jerusalem, Judah, getting ready to take them into what? Captivity. Why? Why were they getting ready to go into captivity? Because of their king, their leader, with his with his underling, with his princes. What they had done was, and the king at this time was Zedekiah. That's what you read, we read in verse eight. So Zedekiah had convinced or led uh, uh, many of God's people into pagan worship. And this was not pleasing to God because God is a good God and the pagan gods are the bad ones. So you can't mix God's worship with the pagan gods. So God now sees them as figs, as fruit. And so he's seeing the, the, uh, Zedekiah and his princess as bad things. And they were evil. He said they were so, he said they were so bad that you couldn't eat them. In other words, this is, uh, this fruit is not literal. It's not a real fig tree, not real fig fruit. God is just using this as symbolic picture of his people because, because you reap what you sow, right? So your words are like fruit. You reap what you sow. You sow bad, and you're going to reap bad. But that's what Zedekiah and his sons did. And we know this is what they did because God is saying, and it's interesting how God does this. Uh, uh, let me say this. Did you notice in verse five that God is even taking the good people? Who are the good figs? The good figs are the one that didn't bow down to those pagan gods. The good figs are those that stay true to the real God. But yet and still, even we can see it in our lives today, in the world today. You can get some bad people that can do something so bad that it affects everyone. And now even the good has to undergo this captivity in Babylon here in this scripture. So, but even though they may go on to Babylon, guess what? They're still going to maintain their worship to the true God. Because God said, I'm taking you there for your own 
good. Because those that uh, are left, the remnant that's left in Jerusalem and those that are in, in, in Egypt that's been worshiping those pagan gods too, God is going to deal with them. So I got to send you away for your own good. And so they get there. And so as they're going to Babylon, now this is what's going to happen. This is what's happening to the bad figs. So who are the bad figs? As I said earlier, Zedekiah, the king now, that's just like, that's just like your leader today. Can you imagine having a leader of your government, of your nation that is so wicked and so evil and so vile, just bad, up to no good? Everything they say, everything they do, their actions is all showing just what kind of king or leader that they are. So this is what happened to Zedekiah because he was so bad. I mean, these things, they was just bad, even his sons. If you guys remember, if you go to, uh, I believe, Second Kings, and it tells the story of what happened. So Nebuchadnezzar uh, uh, gets there to uh, bring Jerusalem into captivity. And Zedekiah calls himself running away. But the Babylonians caught up with him, and they brought him to Nebuchadnezzar and his sons. So you got Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and his sons standing in Nebuchadnezzar's face. And what does Nebuchadnezzar say to Zedekiah? Because remember now, he's very bad. And so Nebuchadnezzar say, are these your sons, Zedekiah? And Zedekiah say, yes. He says, look at them for the last time because you would not see them again. And Nebuchadnezzar killed the sons right there in front of Zedekiah's face. He killed them because they were what? Bad figs. They were so evil. And then Nebuchadnezzar turned his focus on Zedekiah. And he said, Zedekiah, do you see my face? And he said, yes. He said, you will see it no more. And he burnt out Zedekiah's eyes and led him into Babylon. He died in Babylon. He could not see no more. See, he took away his sight. You can't see them pagan gods you serving no more. You can't see them pagan gods. You can't worship down. You can't see them no more. Your eyesight is gone, Zedekiah. He was just that wicked. He was just that bad or evil that God had to use an enemy to get rid of this evil, wicked king that, that had led his people astray. We see this throughout the Old Testament. It wasn't just Zedekiah. It was many of these kings that went back and forth serving God. Then they want to go dabble over and serve the enemy too. God ain't having it. He ain't having it. That's why you got to have the spirit of what? discernment so you can discern between good and bad just like we saw with barzillai in the first text that we went to amen so there it is right there good god is telling us through the prophet's eyes that good and evil don't go together good and bad is is, is an unusual couple because if they were usual, God would have never destroyed them he never would have put them in captivity it, it, he only did it because they was doing bad things so it's not usual for this couple to be together. They need they need to separate. They need a divorce. They don't need to be together at all. Ooh, that was a good one, wasn't it? Let's take a look. Now we're going to go down into the New Testament. We got some great scriptures here. You're going to love this. So let's take a look now at Matthew. Matthew chapter 12. And we're going to read 33 through 37. Now, this is where Jesus is speaking. And this was written around about 30 AD when Jesus was walking the earth. So let's take a look and let's get in on the conversation of what Jesus has to say about this couple called what? Good and bad. Take a look at the text. Either make the tree good and its fruit good or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you be an evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. Verse 37, for by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will 
be condemned. Oh, what a beautiful picture here that Jesus has given us. So here, just like we saw in Jeremiah, Jeremiah, that was a parable of the good figs and the bad figs. That, that was a parable telling us the condition of the people. And notice Jeremiah used fruit. And then we get to Jesus and Jesus is giving us a what? Parable. And what did he use as an example? Fruit, a tree. He's talking about the fruit again, isn't he? Just like Jeremiah did. So Jeremiah showed us that this couple don't belong together. And now Jesus is telling us we got a choice. The choice is ours. We are the tree. We are the, the one that's producing either good fruit or bad fruit. You make the choice. The decision is yours. So Jesus is giving this parable. He's speaking to the religious leaders at that time, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and even to the ones today, he called them brood of vipers. What's a viper? Snakes. Ooh, man. He says, how can you being evil speak good? See? How can that be? It's, it, it, it's not possible because if they are saying something good, it's only, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's just a, a farce. It's just to tickle your ears to get you to believe what they're saying and do what they want you to do. Jesus said, how can you do this? How can you be so evil and speak good? He says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if this evil person is saying something good, it ain't good to benefit you. It's, it's to benefit them, their evil ways, their evil uh, lies and manipulation and cheating and scandals and scam. It's for their uh, good, but their good is not good like God see it. Their good is wicked. Their good is bad. Their good is evil. Remember God said in his word, they're going to say good is evil and evil is good. See, Satan switches it around. He flips that thing around. That's how he can deceive so many Christians. Uh, uh, just like he deceived the believe the religious folks then, he's deceiving a whole lot of religious folks now. It is amazing to me that so many Christians is following an evil man. You know he's evil because the words that he speaks, whether he type it uh, uh, put it out on social media, man or woman, this just ain't for men, these are women too, that anyone that they put out there and and, 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 and telling you what, how they are, they words speak and let you know just what character they have. Malicious. And you better not say nothing bad about this person. You better not go against them because they'll come out and tweet something and say something about you just so vile and wicked. It makes you want to crawl in a hole and not come out. Some people don't even want to run for election. Some people, they giving up on public service because of this evil man. The evil words that come out of this evil man's mouth. And people are afraid of him or her. Remember I say it goes both ways. They're afraid of this, this person. Wow. Take a look at verse 35. Jesus is giving us a picture now of the good man. He says, now a good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, he's going to bring forth good things. So when he goes out on social media or he goes out and speak in the public, he's going to bring forth good. He's going to speak good of his uh, country. He's going to He's going to bring out the best. He's not going to look at the negative. He's not going to dwell on that. He wants to, he wants the people to come together in unity. He's going to bring forth good things out of his heart. He's not going to, he's not going to bad mouth individuals and make them feel this small. Like you, like you are not even human no more. But look what Jesus says. And an evil man, two men, one is good, one is evil. That's why you can't have both. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth what? Evil things. That's why Jesus was saying earlier to the uh, to the brood of vipers, how can you? How can you be so evil? How, how is it that you can speak good things? Because Jesus can see right through it. You're speaking good, but I know your heart. I know your intentions. I know that you plan on destruction. I know you're planning on division. I know your heart. So the people, they only hear your words and see you type it out on your social media platform. But I know your heart. Wow. But I say, take a look at verse 36. This is Jesus talking. But I say to you, 
that for every idle word men may speak. And these men is the good men and the evil men. He said they will give an account of it on the in the day of what judgment. So you may think you can escape judgment day down here. You you may think, oh, I ain't got to go to court. They ain't gonna they ain't gonna put me in court. I ain't gonna get on the witness stand. I ain't gonna do nothing. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use all of my power and authority to get out of it. Uh, not on judgment day, you won't. And not on God's calendar, you won't. You're going to have to face it. So every text message, every email, everything you said, everything you wrote, it's going to be on a record. God got an account of every word we say, the good people and the evil. God got a record. And on judgment day, you're going to have to stand. We're going to have to stand before him. And you can't deny it. You can't say, oh, uh, it, it's a witch hunt. You can't say, oh, they after me. Uh, 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 they don't like me. You can't say that. Now, nah, because nah, God got your record. He got everything you said. He got everything you said, what you wrote down, and he got it what's in your heart. You got it written in your heart. God got that too. Look what he says in verse 37. For by your words, you will be justified. Talking about the good man. See, the good man is bringing forth good fruit, so he's going to be what? Justified. Uh-oh. But here's the other man. And by your words, talking about that evil man, you will be condemned. Whoa. So on judgment day, we got two individuals standing before God. We got the good people and you got the evil ones. So all of us, every word, everything we have said, it is on record in heaven. You cannot escape the cameras of God. God got you on video and God got us on it on audio. Either way, you can't escape. You can't deny it. It's there. It's in heaven. You might could get rid of it here on earth. You might try to delete the messages. You might try to uh, uh, throw the authorities off and have these other kind of little phones that you don't think they can trace. That's all right. They may not trace it down here, but God got it. God got it. So you better get yourself right now. Get your life together now before judgment day come. Evil man, wicked man, lying man corrupt man god is giving you an opportunity to repent because your words is going to either put you uh on uh, on, uh the good or it's going to put you on the bad side where you're going to be weeping and gnashing oh yeah we got scripture all right then everyone take a look we still gonna hang out in matthew take a look at matthew chapter 13 now 47 and 48 again this scripture was written around about 30 a.d here is Jesus again, giving us a parable. Remember everyone, when you're reading your parables in, in your Bible, these parables, this is Jesus speaking of himself. He's talking about the kingdom of heaven, look what he says. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind, talking about fish, which when it was full, they drew to the shore. And they sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but threw the bad away. Ooh, I like this here. And Jesus is now giving us a parable of the fishermen. Remember, Jesus was a great fisherman. You know, the disciples, majority of them were fishermen. And so Jesus is saying the kingdom of heaven is likened to you out there fishing. So you don't went out there fishing. You throw your net because they uh, they didn't use poles. They used net for commercial uh, fishing during that time. So with a net, you catch more fish than just a, a regular uh, a fishing pole. So now they got all these fish, right? So they're bringing them in. Now, remember, the fish is symbolic of people. Remember, we saw the last scripture where the tree was symbolic of people in Jeremiah's scripture. And we saw in the other Matthew scripture. But here we're seeing fish as people. Like Jesus said in Matthew 4, 19. What did he say? He said, follow me and I'm going to make you what? Fishers of men. I'm doing a wonderful series. Let me just give a plug out. Go to my uh, other website called MyBibleRegistration.com. Check out that website. I'm doing a full 42 episode series on uh, fishers of men. What kind of uh, fish are you catching? So check that out. You're going to love that series. So let's get back to this lesson here. 
So in verse 48, Jesus says, which when it was full, talking about the net, got all the fish in it now, all the fish. They drew to the shore and they sat down and gathered the good into the vessels. But uh, uh, what they do with the bad, threw them away, threw them away. So that tells me that the good and the bad don't belong together. This is an unusual couple. They do not belong together. See, Jesus gives us an opportunity, you know, when he brings us out, when we're out there in the water, when we're out there in the world, the sea is like the world. We've been out there for years and years and years. We've had plenty of time to get our lives straight. We've had plenty of time. We can't tell Jesus, oh, you didn't have enough time. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Like Barzella, you 80 years old, you got enough time. So don't be coming to Jesus crying. Tell me you ain't got enough time. So now you get there and now Jesus now got everybody and he's separating. Judgment day. Good over here, bad over there. Separating. Because you had plenty of time to repent and change your life. You could have been like one of the good fish, but you chose not to. You chose to continue to sow your wickedness, your vile language, your hatred, your division, your destruction. You just bent on your wicked, evil way. And you want everybody you can get to go with you. And it's so sad. Again, you got Christians, so-called Christians, following this bad man. And wherever he's going, guess what? You're going to go with them. So you got time now to repent. Get out of there. Get get away from that bad man or woman. Get away from them. They're leading you to your deathbed, to you, to destruction. No eternal life for you. Uh, you have eternal death, but you ain't going to have no eternal life. You're going to be gnashing and weeping for the rest of your death days. Wow. Look at that, huh? So, again, good and bad is an unusual couple. Let's take a look, everyone, at another scripture. Still in Matthew. You're going to love this one, too. Matthew 22. Let's take a look at 10, 11, and 13. Again, this scripture was written around about 30 AD. Who's talking? Jesus is giving another parable. Let's get in and see what he says. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. Then the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Ain't that what we just saw in the last parable with Jesus, with the fish that they uh, uh, throw them away? So this is what's happening here. I'm loving this because here Jesus is giving us a picture of the wedding. Remember how Revelation talking about the wedding of the bride and the bridegroom? This is a picture of Jesus talking about his wedding. And so remember in the story how Jesus sent out invitations to the first group of people and everybody had an excuse. Nobody could come to the wedding. So Jesus said, OK, I'll write this one I'm going to do. Now that the ones that I sent the invitation to, you don't want to come? Okay, now I'm going to open this up to everybody. So he sends the servants out and say, I, I, go get them. Bring everybody in. Go to the highways. Go go out. Wherever you can find them, bring them. Bring them. So the servants go out and they start getting good people. They getting bad people and bring them all into the wedding. And they get there. Now, when you get to this wedding, now remember, there's going to be a change of garment. And this garment that you're changing, the good and the bad, this is a wedding where you're going to have to change your attitude, your 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 uh, uh, your uh, your morals, your eth- everything is going to change because you're putting on some new garment. You're putting on, putting on a brand new garment. This garment that you're putting on is a holy garment, man. And so when you put this garment on, now you can go to the wedding because you've been changed. You've been saved. You came out. Uh, uh, God uh, allowed you to come to this wedding and he, he's giving you an opportunity to come to the wedding feast. So those that decided, hey, look, I'm going to put my garment on. I want to put my garment on. But, you know, you got some people that ain't going to do it. They just ain't going to change. 
They, they don't care because they think because of their status, because of who they are. I don't need to change. I don't need to change my attitude. I don't need to change my ways. I am who I am and you can accept me like I am or not. Okay. All right. So now they're at the wedding. They're in the wedding hall. And here come the king or the bridegroom, Jesus. So he's walking. He's walking around saying hello to everyone. Hey, good you're here. Glad. Uh, wait, wait. Hold up. Who are you? Hey. You don't have a wedding. You ain't got the garment on. You ain't got the a wedding garment on. You still got your nasty attitude. You still got your wicked disposition. Hey, get him out. Jesus said, get him out. Take him out. Put him out in art, out of darkness. Cast him there. And he's going to be what? Weeping and gnashing. Wow. There it is right there. See? Another picture of Judgment Day, isn't it? So a lot of people think they're going to get the judgment day. They're going to get to the wedding and they think, oh, I can get in and they change nothing. Still lying, still manipulating, still scheming, still scamming, just still being corrupt, still out there tweeting and texting and emailing all your wicked plans and plots. And you think you going to get in to heaven and you think you're going to be able to eat from the tree of life? I don't think so, because Jesus know you ain't. He said, uh-uh. Jesus said, even bind him, hand and foot. In other words, when 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 they when they uh uh bind you up, you can't get loose. You're gonna be you're gonna be weeping and gnashing because you can't get loose. You tied now to your own words. You're tied now to your own actions. You did it. It was your choice. You refused to humble yourself and give your life over to Jesus Christ. It was your choice. Just like Barzilla, I can still discern between good and bad. I'm 80 years old. So there's no reason why you cannot uh, change your way. There's no reason you shouldn't have changed your garment. Put on the garment of righteousness, the garment of humbleness, the garment of love and peace and goodness and grace. You, 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 you can't put that on. You love your dirty, filthy garment of wickedness and corruption and plotting and scheming. You love that. Okay, that's your choice. That's your choice. You're going straight to the place that God has already reserved for you. And you know where that is. All right, then, everyone. What a good scripture there. Well, that's going to conclude the lesson uh, today on this uh, uh, teaching of the couple called Good and Bad. I want to remind everyone, get on the Bible reading plan with us. We are now at the end of the month, February. You got just a, a couple more days maybe to uh, get on the reading plan and finish this month out before we go into the next month. So again, as you can see, the words, remember what Jesus said about the words? These are his words. You want to invest. You want to eat these words. Invest in the word of God and you will have a good harvest. You'll have a good fruit. Remember he talked about the tree? Good fruit. You know, Luke 8, 11 says the seed is the word of God. And let me just add this. You guys stop listening to these churches telling you seed is money. Oh, so a seed. So you might know it's not. Luke 8, 11 said the seed is the word of God. This is where you get the good fruit from, the good tree, because you are now sowing the word of God. Every time you read a scripture, you're sowing the word of God. So why don't you do that? Make that investment today and you will be rich. You'll be rich in mercy. You'll be rich in love. You'll be rich in grace. There are so many riches out there, spiritual riches, just waiting for you to take advantage of and to be uh, abundant in the great harvest that God has. So thank you so much, everyone. And I pray that you would get on this Bible reading plan. All right. Okay. And when you do, we would love for you to contact us right here at blackhoopministries.com. Go to our website again. We have great uh, video and lessons there uh, for you to enjoy and learn from. And if you would love to support this uh, ministry, we would, we would uh, love to accept your donation if you want to. So uh, any donation would be greatly appreciated. And we use those donations to further the kingdom of God by helping those that are homeless. We like to give to other nonprofit organizations to help our uh, veterans and so many other programs that are out there. And also we are in an international missionary too, where we go and support them as well. So you can check that out at my other website called My Bible. 
registration.com to see those international interviews that we conduct every month. Amen. So again, contact us. Send us an email if you want to, and you can send it to loveblackhoo at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you and share with us your Bible reading plan, the words that you receive, that you're sowing and the fruit that you're getting. I know it's good. It's the word of God. You're going to have some good fruit. Amen. Amen, everyone. All right, then. Well, that brings us to the end. We're going to end it with prayer. We're going to end it like we began it in prayer. Amen. So dear Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost, thank you for this lesson today. Thank you for those that tuned in, God, today that was struggling uh, uh, on the fence, fence whether I, I'm good, am I bad. You can't be both. You got to make a decision today because every word that we saw in the scriptures today, Jesus told us that we're going to be judged by our words. So, Father God, I'm reaching out to those today to come into the kingdom of heaven, come into the kingdom of God, come into the word of God so we will be saved for eternal life, not eternal uh, damnation. So bless everyone, Father God, with all of their needs that they've been praying to you, whatever their prayer has been, whether it's been a year, they've been waiting, two years, uh, 30 days, or one day, however long they've been waiting, God, we're believing that you're going to manifest an answer to them today. With that being said, we love you and we praise you. Until this time next week, we see everyone on another great teaching episode from you, oh God. Amen. All right then, everyone. So that's going to do it for us here at BlockuMinistries.com. We're going to see you next week. You don't want to miss next week's couple. We're going to be talking about mother and father. Is it Are they usual or are they unusual? Stay tuned. You don't want to miss it. Join us next week. Okay. God bless you all for episode number 10, Mother and Father. Love you all. Take care. I'm Minister Love and goodbye.